welcome to the nightclub guys it's your host the night wrencher now a couple of questions came up about the way my alternator is set up i did go over it briefly on the ls swap 2020 video uh, for my carbureted ls but i'm gonna quickly go over my setup right now so you guys can see i've got my dmm hooked up right now the battery is sitting at about 12.3 volts uh, my ignition is on so i've got my lights on i've got my batteries or my fuel pumps running uh, i do run dual batteries in my truck so voltage isn't a big issue especially for cranking or staying on for a while i've got my alternator set up here and basically if you look at the plug i've got it um, just kind of barely hooked up together uh, but it's going to be the brown or the second wire and this brown wire goes in and hooks up to a 470 ohm resistor this resistor uh, Then gets connected to this wire which goes to my ignition switch So if you look inside in my cluster I've got a wire that gets hooked up to the ignition switch which is to power on all of my gauges so my fuel gauge my battery gauge uh, my oil pressure and my temperature are all powered by the same wire from my ignition switch. So when I turn the key on, right now it's off, see it shows zero volts, I turn the key on and it'll give me whatever the battery voltage is. If I start it, it should give me whatever the charging voltage is. These are the resistors that I ended up using. These happen to be half watt 470 ohms, 2%. Um, a lot of the write-ups tell you to use quarter watt, and then these are half watt. They sell bigger ones too. Basically, it just comes down to packaging. The resistance is the same, but half watt can handle half watt of power. Quarter watt can handle quarter watt of power, etc., etc. These were available, and they're 470 ohms, which is all you really need to be looking for. And these will work great. You can get them for a couple bucks at an electronic store, so they're super affordable. This was a pack of six for like two bucks, so, you know. The recommended alternator for these swaps is the DR44, or the one that come in the heavy-duty trucks, which is, uh, it's a flat-face alternator, and it's a little bit bigger. It also uses a longer belt. Um, it's supposed to produce uh, about 20 or 30 more amps, and it's about 30 or 40 dollars more than the regular one. I wasn't really thinking about it when I got mine and I just got the regular base model and it's actually been working fine. Uh, I have the back wire that is a two gauge wire hooked up to the stud on the terminal. That wire is hooked up to my starter solenoid in the back where it feeds my starter and from the starter, if you can tell right there, I have the secondary wire for my secondary battery. So the way my charging system is set up I've got my battery, one on each side, I've got the ground on the frame on this one, the ground on the engine on that one, and then I've got an extra ground from here to my body. So I've got ground points in all over the vehicle, so I shouldn't have any problems. If you guys were to hook up that wire that's on the alternator to the back of the alternator, and just feed it directly you would end up burning up the alternator because the alternator wants to see low voltage so it can correctly calculate the voltage that it's going to produce if it already has an excessive amount of voltage it's going to add two volts on top of that so it'll add two volts to whatever it's reading so if you want to lower the charging voltage you increase the size of the resistor if you want to increase the voltage you decrease the size of the resistor. But I suggest you just use what everybody else uses, which is a 470 ohm resistor. And my setup has been like this for the last year or so, and I've had no issues daily driving it. I probably put 5,000 miles at least on my truck, and I've had no problems so far. So this is my setup. I hope this helps somebody trying to set up their alternator, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.